I thought, I don't know, maybe I can do that. What? So there was a lot of people that was coming against Brian McKnight. Now, Brian McKnight, he is remarried uh, to his wife, Dr. Leilani McKnight. Uh, she's a Filipina. And you know that nobody likes to see black men happy at all. It don't matter if you're a celebrity, all the way down to yeah, regular dude. They don't. And if you're happy with a woman of outside the community, yeah. oh my God, it, you, they, you're going to lose. Trust me. But it's okay. Something I got to say about that before I even get started. Then why do black women expect us to clap for them when they date out? When they as black women date out? I don't get that. They be putting people on the spot, be doing little tricks like, hey, 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 here's my husband. I'm not going to say what color he is. I'm going to just show up on the spot. Oh, he's white. Why would you do that? Why would you try to do shock value? I didn't know how you would handle it. Well, why would you chance that? for someone like Serena to get married to a man outside the community and when she's happy, nobody's demonizing her. It's only black men. Yeah, well, no, no, he said Brian it. McKnight oh. had a child with his you know, current wife and he named him Brian McKnight, but he also, the middle names is different. That's why he's, his child is not named junior. So they rehash some things saying that, oh, he abandoned his black children. Oh, Brian McKnight is a deadbeat. That's what they were saying about this man, lying on him. Now, they tried this before, three years ago, and, and I, when I heard this, it just bothered me because I said, I know there's something more to it than this. Brian, listen, I, I can look at certain men and can just tell, Brian McKnight never looked like to me he was just a sorry dude. I never seen that with brother. So let, let's go ahead and re review what Brian McKnight said about these same Lying allegations that come from, you know, his grown sons, grown men. That's rude. They trying to some money to to his grown from the sons. most heinous craziness I've ever seen in my life. That my oldest son Brian would post that I'm abandoning my children, and the reason why I suppose is because I have a new family, and I guess this stems from a post that I made the other day about my son Jack who I'm very proud of which isn't to say I'm not and haven't been proud of my other children but I was proud of this one for the things that he did that day we'll get back to that in a second now this video is three years old okay I was letting you know three years ago he put po he posted this video anyone who knows me knows over the last 20 years 30 years now as a matter of fact that I've been there for my children every step of the way until recently and let's be clear my two sons are 30 and 27. Okay. This is three years ago. So they brought this mess up back in 2023. So wow. as you add three years to the, what they are now. They're older than that. And they're still trying to ride their daddy's coattails being grown. Co man, what's, what's up with these, these, this generation, man? What I look like being 33 years old talking about my daddy and what he got going on with his money. Not 12, not 13, but 30. And 27. Now my daughter's about to turn 18. That's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever. I've always been there. I've always been there with advice, whether they took it or not. I have always been the sounding board, and I've always been the one that tried to to well, help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting the to part. reach out for. Um, I guess one of my only faults is that I gave my children everything that I didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it. Cause I know how much I would have appreciated it. Now you never heard nothing negative about Brian McKnight ever. So this brother, I really believe what he's saying. Okay. And if a man was so bad, why would he want to give his children things that he didn't have? And that mistake he's talking about, that's something that any of us who try to do better can relate to because we don't want our kids to go through what we went through as kids. So we want to give them the things that we wish they had. But as you were here, Brian McKnight 
says that was a mistake. Now, you never heard nothing bad about Brian McKnight, but automatically everybody ready to believe the worst about this man. The worst. Y'all talk, y'all. Yeah, because he's dating outside the race. This is. I haven't reacted to anyone yet, but I saw it where they said they're going to start giving money to black feminists. To, I'm paraphrasing, but they said that they were going to give money to them. And the main reason why is because of stuff like this. There's three reasons why they're doing this. One, they want us out of America. They, they want us out of America. Two, they want black women to act as the bottom capitalism feeding to feed the machine, the capitalist machine. And the easiest way to do that is sex. And to why women don't want to give it up. They got black women doing it. Because if that's the case, they would rate them the same way. And I don't fall for the movies and I don't fall for the Hollywood relationships because when, let's say Robert, Robert uh, De Niro, when he divorced his black wife, it wasn't a big huffy. It wasn't, oh, oh, white men all this. No, it wasn't none of that. It was none of that. It was, he divorced his wife. When... The next half model chick got divorced from her white husband. It was none of that. It's only when black men date out. And, and you're wondering why their voice is so strong. It's because it's instrumented to destroy black men. That, that's all it is. Y'all talking down more on Brian McKnight than you talk down on Future. Future got all these kids out here. You never heard Brian I'm McKnight going, with all that I'm mess. When I was their age, um, I would tell you as parents out there, entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do. And I know I am guilty of that. Um, for whatever reasons, I'm guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children because you want to help them as much as you can, and I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. Good and grown. Good and grown. Because Doesn't when I turned 18, you know, I would say, that was told, hey, you either go to school or you go to work. That's your options. But you're not going to be laying around here just depending on me. And I never had the luxury of depending on nobody. Because at 18 years old, no, I'm sorry. I started working actually at 15. I working at 15, but I was doing a little odd jobs here and there at the age from the age of eight, cutting grass and making money on the weekends, right? Helping people move, do whatever, cleaning up trash, do whatever I can to go make some money. Okay. But yet, but yet Brian McKnight would had his kids taking care of everything up to 25 doggone years old. And that's still not enough sons. Not your daughters, even though your daughters got to get cut off at a point too, but your grown sons, what kind of man they going to be? Point that, that happened much later, I'm with them. but I've been there. Um, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm going to pay for everything for two years, but you're going to have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's going to be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it. Um, it was just right around the time. See, 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 see right there. See right there. He put them out his house. Say, look, fellas, two years, I'm going to take care of you. Even though when you put a kid out, you're supposed to be taking care of him. But he still did it. And that still wasn't enough. Then you got the nerve to get on the, the, the internet and down talk your father when he done everything for your trifling behind. Well, I can't stand so I can't stand ungrateful kids. I can't stand it. That runs all through me. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? And some of you right now probably got some ungrateful grown children. You probably do. And you've been having problems with them. Let me tell y'all a story. This one woman that we know, she recently passed away. This woman was having a lot of problems with her grown daughter. A few weeks ago when we had an, an event, you know, this woman would always bartend when we have an event. We say, Hey, we always call her and her business black woman. Aww. The last time we seen her, she was crying, you know, to my cousin, 
you know, and my wife, the, how many problems she was having with her grown daughter, grown daughter, putting her mama through the ringer. Then the sister goes to a bartending event in Nashville and the sister ended up having a, a heart attack and she died. But prior to that, she was stressed out by that grown child. Let me tell you parent, some out here, they have grown children. Do not let those grown children put you in the ground because all they're going to do is go on their life and, and go do whatever they got going on. You have done your part. You've done everything you need to do for those children. It's time for them to grow up and go on somewhere and live their life. It is not on you to be taking care of their behind. New Thicket Stick It Thickening Brow Gel Mascara okay. go ahead, girl, go with vegan plant -based. There we go. Sorry. All your life, you done your part. If they didn't take your advice, if they didn't do good with the help and the resources you gave them, it is what it is. It may hurt you. It's gonna bother you, but you're gonna be better on the other end. And sometimes life gotta smack them in the face for them to learn something instead of you bailing them out of everything. Do not, do not, do not let them grow and cheer and put you in the ground. Is that a time that you got to say, you know what? I'm living my life now. I'm not going to be stressed out about what you got going on. You're not going to put me in the ground. And that Leilani and I had gotten together. Leilani was working at children's hospital. And let's be clear. Leilani has been one of the only people who's been that advocate to keeping us together, to keeping us having a relationship because she wants to have the nuclear family as much as I did. So if she was so bad of a person, she would, should have been like, Ooh, this is my advantage. And this is my time to go ahead on and get him away from his kids. And that's not what, the, what she did. That's and a good woman. in her face at every turn. She got them jobs at the it. hospital, $18 an hour with benefits and with the option of the hospital actually paying for them to go back to school. They said, and I quote that they knew they didn't, they didn't want to stop smoking and they would have to pass a drug test. And the day I had the doctors looking into it, and he goes on there, you know, taking a big puff, uh, which is fine. If you want to smoke, that's fine. I'm not saying that I'm saying that that's bad. If that's that is, that's not fine. If your smoking is preventing you from being gainfully employed, that's a problem. See, see, he's still being too nice because I'm not that nice. Your behind is so silly. You got money, go, go, go smoke it up, but you can't go get, get, get a job. Shh. And he's, and they still are trying to help these silly behind. That's your choice. That's your choice. But what I'm telling you is that we have been advocates for them every step of the way. Now let's go to the part where we have been estranged again. We talk about abandonment. We're not, it's, I'm not abandoning them. We are estranged, which happens more often than not in this particular situation. BJ broke into our home a few months ago and he put X's on the eyes of our wedding photos. Hold on. A grown son breaks into his father's home, putting X's on some wedding photos, like some old underage teenage girl. Who's upset that daddy moved on. These are grown. These are grown men, a grown man, not an underage teenage girl in her feelings. And then he put a photo of my first wedding on Leilani's vanity. It was at that moment. And after I heard him say, come on now, dog. Come on, man. What kind of sons this, this brother got? And was pointed to from other friends of mine that saw his posts on social media that he, he basically said that I was better off dead to him than alive. I was more valuable to him dead than alive. And that was the end of me dealing with him. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see that not my last video, but the video before that, 42, the song was written by Brian and I, and it was directed the video by Nico and I went on and I said how proud I was of Nico at the time. And I really, really was, he did an awesome job in that video. Um, even before that two, less than two years ago, these are the two gentlemen who stood up for me as my best man in my wedding. So abandonment, deadbeat dad, I, like, I'll reiterate, I've never missed a day of child support. I've been there every step of the way. BJ. Let me tell you something. One of my children told me you're dead to me. I said, okay, we're, we're gone because you know what? I love for you. I got a lot of love for you, 
but I'm not going to be around nobody that's going to be my enemy. I don't care if it's a kid of mine. I'm sorry. Not going, not going to happen. Not going to happen. I mean, what do you, what do y'all expect this brother to do? What do y'all expect him to do? You talked about Jack's new car. Jack, BJ had three brand new cars before he was 22. But I'm not talking about material things because none of this has anything to do with money. It's about respect. Respect goes both ways. And even in family, there's a line that shouldn't and should not ever be crossed. Uh, it, it, it's crazy to me that people will just believe anything. He's a man I fear to become, but he's also a man I respect. I'm gonna keep it real. It's kind of sad because you can listen to how salty he is, and it does sound like he's put on the face. Um, this is this is pretty sad. It really is, because there are people who get stuck in situations that they can't help. And listening how they took for granted what happened actually physically hurts. Because there are some kid, children who are like kicked out too early, and they're like they need a second chance. You know it's worse in the black community because, like, sometimes the girls get chance after chance, or they can just, you know, do stuff with their kitty and and support themselves financially. And you got all these girls trying to do OnlyFans, selling their pictures, trying to boost themselves, and you know it's not working. You know, the only time they really know it's like that is when they're not trying to sell themselves. And those other girls will not be grateful. But these guys sound like women who can't support themselves. And that's horrifying. I'm going to be honest. It's horrifying. Thing, and I thought it was important to set the record straight and let you guys know that. It's not crazy, brother, because they love to believe the worst of the worst about black men. They yeah. love it. This country salivate on hopefully hearing some horrible things about brothers. Abandonment has nothing to do with any of this. Deadbeat dad, I've been there every step of the way. And let's also remember that these kids are 30 and 27, not 12. It's time for grown men to be grown men. And I'm sorry that tough love happens to, to be this way. Um, and it's, I do wish them the best. I want them to have and to reach their dreams and their full potential. But like any other man in the world, you, you gotta go out there and you gotta take it. Um, as far as my daughter is concerned, um, you know, her mother, if you look back at my Instagram, she was a part of this family too, with Jack and Julie and Leilani and myself. And unfortunately, along the way, a couple of years ago, I got wind that there was an older cousin who was above 18, who was quite possibly having sex with her. So I called, as a father should, to the, the state. Y'all don't be believing me. Y'all don't be believing me, but it happens. Uh -huh. There's a reason why they have favorite cousins. There's a reason why average ass dudes who who who, who, who do certain things uh, they're not the favorite in a black in a black family. Look, some of these cousins be blowing each other's backs out, and I had to find out that the hard way by going to someone else's family's cookout. And this is this is why I don't. This is why I have respect issues for some black parents because, like, they'll look at guys like me and stuff like that, or I have a student that I'm protecting my family. You're not checking for purity or nothing. Nothing against him, but this happens a lot more frequently than people like to discuss. So I call who was above 18, who was quite possibly having sex with her. So I called, as a father should, to the, the state office for, for children's affairs there in Arizona, and I had never heard anything back, but the next thing that her mother did was to block all of us from her social media, from her phone, and completely estranged. What? Are you and he's trying me? to be responsible. Yeah, what are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, no, man. it happens. Wow. Oh, it happens. And for the mom to start blocking people, I'm makes no me think it's true. <laughs> Makes me think it's true. What kind of woman that was. Oh, Jesus Christ. Once again, parents, don't let those grown kids of yours put you in the ground 
or bust up your family that you have now. Okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. Her from us. What that told me was they didn't want me to be involved in her life that way. So to see the post that she said, considering that her mother only had a child with me for money in the first place, and I'll reiterate this, I have not missed a child support payment. She goes to one of the most incredible private schools in Arizona. Um, so I don't know where this is all coming from, but I thought that I needed to let everybody know that there's another side to this story. Um, you can choose to believe what you want. Uh, I, I thought that I would lay it out there for you. Anything that I say is actual and factual. All you have to do is Google Brian McKnight and Sons and you'll see us singing all over YouTube. Um, go back and look at my Instagram. Go back a couple of years. You'll see that I posted about all of my children. Um, but remember that these kids, these boys, are they're grown men. And tough love is exactly what it is. It's tough love. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. And I hope that that gives you a little bit more perspective. Well, you know, I didn't doubt the brother at all. That's why I say, you know, let's look more into this because I know how they like to demonize, you know, brothers, you're just men in general, fathers, these women run away with a narrative. And unfortunately people just want to run with it and believe it. But you know, I feel, I feel Brian with what he dealing with, with that situation. Me, how I am, I'm just going to distance myself. I'm not going to, one thing about me, I'm not dealing with the drama. I'm not dealing with nobody's drama. I would disappear like, like water vapor from you. If you bring drama anywhere around me, trust me, you won't know where I went because I'm not going to tell you. That's messed up. They can't appreciate what their dad done for him. So they're trying to cause, you know, Hey, well, what are you supposed to do? Take care of you his, they, his whole life. Come on now. But you got these little feminized boys today. They can't be men, unfortunately. But let me know what y'all think about, you know, our brother, Brian McKnight here, what he, dealing with, you know, what we said three years ago about the same situation, you know, it, it, it's utterly ridiculous with some, some parents have to go through with grown children. That was just sad. So all of that was sad because it's, it's hitting a lot of notes. This is what happens when a black man tries to do the right thing in the community and he, he messes with it. Um, it, it's just sad because he's soft-spoken, strict, And all of that was sad. Um, I can't stop the recording. It's just I have to not hold on. Uh, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to take in. I pretty much said everything I could, but it, I'm not surprised. The thing about the cousin parking, that, that happens a lot in the Black community. And, you know, it's an uncomfortable conversation that people don't want to have. I don't know why they do that. But some of this leads to gloom. So I don't understand why everyone acts new. Look, I'm an average dude, and one of the things that I'm happy I didn't do was be a part of that whole, you're a good-looking enough cousin to fuck. Those, those circles are, do exist. And, you know, that's why the family structure is sometimes weird in the community. He had a good-looking enough daughter, and someone decided to way to move on. You know, it depends. Sometimes the girl does it first. But, you know, the men, the best thing to do is to say no and stay out of it. But that, that was all, that was horrifying. And it's just, it's really exciting to digest all of that. Because as a man, your job is to protect and provide. 
something skinned underneath your protection and hurting. Um, I've been through some stuff. I've been given some graces, but something that I've learned and realized, especially by watching other races, is that we need, as Black men, graces. But the bigger issue is that we need to just back off of Black women. They want you to have everything, and they're using their cooch to pay for everything. You can't compete with black women. You can't compete with coochie vices. So plenty of them aren't worried about their weight and they can push through to school because they don't have to care about certain things. Men be trying to make money, build themselves up. Some men get kicked out early because they're, they're, um, their mothers get a boyfriend. It, it, it's crazy all types of stuff. So 